If you're a plant manager looking for practical courses to train your team in industrial automation, we have several courses for you. Check out realpars.com business and fill out the form. Our team will get in touch with you quickly to help with your team's development. In modern automation systems, instrument field buses are often used to provide a method of connecting field devices using a trunk and drop style bus topology. This type of network structure saves wiring and cabling, allowing for a faster and less expensive installation. One of the simplest and most cost effective options for industrial communication is the Aussie bus, or actuator sensor interface. If you're new to this technology, don't worry. This guide will walk you through what Aussie bus is, the different types of network segments, and the steps to construct an Aussie bus segment. For a more in-depth look at industrial sensors and actuators, and exciting new industrial field buses like single-pair Ethernet, go to realpars.com and check out our extensive course catalog. Your door to upskilling is just a few clicks away. For example, in the course Single-Pair Ethernet Fundamentals, you'll learn the basics of this new technology, along with some practical examples. You can find the link to this course in the video description. Aussie Bus is an instrument field bus that is simple, easy to design, and easy to install. Aussie Bus was designed to interface with sensors and actuators on the plant floor using a single two-wire cable. Both data and power are transmitted over the same cable. This makes Aussie Bus one of the most affordable field bus solutions. Aussie Bus is a serial bus, and communication is half duplex, meaning data can be transmitted only in one direction at a time. The data rate is only 167 kilobits per second, but the simplicity of the network allows a communication turnaround time of only 5 milliseconds. Each standard Aussie slave device can receive 4 bits of data and send 4 bits of data. Because Aussie Bus is so simple compared to Profibus PA or Foundation Field Bus, even those engineers new to automation field buses can design and set up an Aussie Bus network. And as the plant's footprint grows, Aussie Bus networks can grow to accommodate more devices over time. Aussie Bus can be considered to be a plug and play system. You don't need deep technical expertise to get started. Earlier in my career, I was able to learn a lot about instrument field buses by designing and installing Aussie Bus systems. Let's take a closer look at how Aussie Bus networks are designed. Aussie Bus networks are divided into segments. Each segment can be thought of as a length of cable from which devices like controllers, sensors, and actuators are connected. Each segment must contain what is called a master device and a power supply. The master device is used to manage, direct, and control communication over the segment. The master sends commands to the connected devices and receives data from them. The power supply provides the power for communication, as well as to power the individual devices. In the segment here, you can see the various components of a typical Aussie bus segment. The connected devices are called slaves and consist of devices such as sensors, actuators, and I.O. modules. Examples of these devices include valve solenoids, valve position feedback signals, and temperature readings. So let's review. An Aussie bus segment requires a master communication module, a power supply, a length of two-wire cable, connectors to attach the various devices, and the devices to which we need to communicate. The master communication module is typically a card that fits into a PLC I.O. chassis or a DCS I.O. rack. It has terminals for connecting the power supply and the Aussie bus segment cable. An Aussie bus power supply typically provides power at 30 volts DC, with varying amperages from 2.6 to 8 amps. Aussie bus power supplies provide internal circuitry that aids in decoupling the data signal from the power signal. The power supply size is chosen to match the load on the segment. Typical Aussie bus devices draw on 30 to 40 milliamps, allowing many devices to reside on a single segment. 
Slave devices are limited to 170 milliamps to ensure reliability. A standard Aussie segment can support up to 31 slave devices. Aussie cables come in a few varieties, including a standard round cable, which is connected by M12 quick disconnects or by terminating the two conductors. Aussie cables are typically yellow in color. Yellow flat cable is often used, and connections are made by simple vampire clamp connections. Aussie bus, unlike other instrument buses, requires no terminators at the end of the cable. A single Aussie segment may run up to 100 meters. Drops of up to 3 meters from the segment trunk cable are allowed. Longer drop lengths may introduce excess voltage drops and data errors. Segment lengths of up to 300 meters are possible using segment extenders, a more advanced concept. First, we need to plan the network. I will construct a simple Aussie bus segment with six slave devices, including two valves, a temperature sensor, a two-button push-button station, and two proximity switches. I have determined from the device manufacturer's data sheets that I will need 40 milliamps for each valve and 30 milliamps for the other four devices. This means my power supply will need to provide at least 200 milliamps, a very small amount. A 2.6 amp power supply will provide more than enough power for my segment. I choose to use standard round cable to install my segment. Next, I need to see how long my segment will be. I locate where the devices need to go in the process, and since Aussie is a trunk and drop system, I determine 30 meters of trunk cable is sufficient to drop the network to each device. I can use special condolets or passive connection bricks to make connections easier. I install the power supply on a DIN rail in a nearby remote I.O. panel, along with my Aussie master communication card. I install the cabling from the power supply to the master card. Now, I will install the cable. I choose to use basket tray to support the cable and keep it away from sources of electrical interference, such as motor cables. Having support, such as basket tray or conduit, physically protects the cable from damage. Now, I will install each slave device using an appropriate connector. Each slave needs to have its unique segment address set at the device. Sometimes this can be done with dip switches or rotary switches. Often a special handheld communicator must be used to set the node address. With the cabling to the field devices completed, I make the final connection at the master communication card. I power on the segment and ensure there that all of my field devices are receiving power. I see some error lights on the devices, but that occurs because I've not yet configured all of the nodes in the master. I need to tell the master which nodes should be present. I also need to configure the communication to the PLC or DCS that the master is connected to. Once I have the configuration complete, the master should be talking to each node. I check for addressing errors, cable faults, and any power supply issues. Finally, I test the devices by reading statuses and sending commands, depending on the capabilities of each device. I send open commands to the valves and verify that I receive position feedback. I press each button on the push button stations and trip the proximity sensors to verify proper detection. I check the temperature sensor to see if it is reading the correct temperature for where it is placed. All good, my Aussie bus segment is installed and working. If you want to learn about the different types of industrial networking technologies, check out the course Industrial Networking Fundamentals, linked in the description of this video. Aussie bus is easy to understand and apply to industrial automation designs. Aussie bus is fast, reliable, and very low maintenance. In the example I gave, additional devices can be added simply by extending the segment and connecting the additional devices. How much easier could scalability be? If you want to learn more about industrial networking, check out realpars.com. Under Courses, just choose Industrial Networking as the skill path. There are lots of courses available to help you build your skills. Expand your team's automation knowledge 
by going to realpars.com business and seeing how we can help your team upskill and prepare for advancement in their careers.